New details are emerging about the, how the shadowy data firm Cambridge Analytica worked to manipulate voters across the globe, from the 2016 election in the United States to the Brexit campaign in Britain, to elections in over 60 countries, including Ukraine, Malaysia, Kenya and Brazil. Cambridge Analytica was founded by the right-wing billionaire Robert Mercer. Trump's former advisor, Steve Bannon of Breitbart News, was one of the company's key strategists and claims to have named the company. The company collapsed in May 2018, after The Observer newspaper revealed the company had harvested some 87 million Facebook profiles without the user's knowledge or consent. Cambridge Analytica used the data to sway voters during the 2016 campaign. A new trove of internal Cambridge Analytica documents and emails are being posted on Twitter, detailing the company's operations across the globe, including its work with President Trump's former national security adviser, John Bolton. The documents come from Cambridge Analytica whistleblower Brittany Kaiser, who worked at the firm for three and a half years before leaving in 2018. Kaiser is featured prominently in the Netflix documentary The Great Hack, which has been shortlisted for an Oscar. There were red flags here and there, especially when I would call our lawyers, who were actually Giuliani's firm at the time, in order to ask for advice on what I could and could not do with certain data projects. And I always got told, hey, you're creating too many invoices. But what really landed the plane for me was, a month after Donald Trump's election, everybody at Cambridge Analytica, who had worked both on the Trump campaign and on the Trump super PAC, which ran the Defeat Crooked Hillary campaign, they gave us a two-day-long debrief, which I write about in detail in my book, Targeted, about what they did. They showed us how much data they collected, how they modeled it, how they identified people as individuals that could be convinced not to vote and the types of disinformation that they sent these people in order to change their minds. It was the most horrific two days of my life. So what did you do after that? I spent a while trying to figure out if there was still anything I could salvage from what I learned there. Was it still possible to use these tools for good? And when I realized that the company had gone way too far in the wrong direction, I started working with journalists in order to go through and figure out what I had in my documents that could possibly assist in saving democracy in the future. You testified before the British Parliament. You um, uh, were subpoenaed by Robert Mueller. Um, you've been involved in a lot of information giving during these investigations. In an odd way, would you describe yourself as a persuadable? Definitely. And that's actually a story that is very prevalent in my book. Most people don't like to think that they are persuadable. We all like to think that we can't be manipulated. But trust me, we're not as digitally literate as we like to think that we are. That's why I released the Hindsight Files, because I want everyone to realize how easy it is for us to be manipulated and that we need to be aware in order to protect ourselves. Peter Thiel, as far as I am aware, was the head of Trump's Technology Advisory Council. Uh, there were multiple meetings where Alexander Nix, the former CEO of Cambridge Analytica, was either being invited or attempting to be invited to those meetings through the Mercers, through Kellyanne Conway, through Steve Bannon. And you were with uh, Rebecca Mercer, right, on Trump inauguration night? Absolutely. Uh, the Mercers and a lot of other people who had played a very large role in the funding and in the campaigning for Donald Trump were reaching as far as they possibly could to technology tools in order to achieve their goals. And are they doing it now? Absolutely. Uh, I think if anybody thinks that this is different than 2016, they are sorely mistaken. In 2016, everybody saw how successful Cambridge Analytica's tactics are, so now there's hundreds of Cambridge Analytica's around the world, especially acting in the U.S. elections right now.